Mold Making Challenge, making a mold and casting of a broccoli head. Now recently I was challenged by one of Smoodon's customers who does food reproductions to make a mold of a broccoli head. Now this company makes replicas of food items for the display industry in grocery stores, in restaurants, in bakeries, and much more. Now molding and casting a broccoli head is as complicated as it gets because of the intricacies of the bud surface texture as well as the pass-throughs we have to deal with off these stems. Now there definitely will be some experimentation associated with coming up with the best method for this project. So let's just jump into it. So in today's mold making challenge we'll be making a mold of this broccoli. And first of all, something that I notice is that the top of the broccoli is very porous and the bottom of it has a lot of pass-throughs. So these are uh, some of the mold making challenges that we have to deal with this project. To start off, I'm going to remove some of the loose stragglers. Oh, we're gonna remove those using a razor blade. And even this piece right here, that's going to get removed for easier molding and casting. And then we're going to remove any sort of loose pieces that are still a part of this uh, vegetable. Now, when I first started this project, I thought I could get away with just making a block mold. Just as easy as I made the one for the large pine cone. If you guys haven't seen that video, you can check it out in the description below. Unfortunately, this was a huge fail, as you can see, even though I got the original broccoli out and was able to cast material into the mold, the uh, casting coming out of this mold actually tore up the mold quite a bit. Uh, it bonded mechanically to the mold itself and was very difficult to extract. So I understood I had to do something about these pass-throughs, the large pass-throughs in the broccoli here. Besides this failure, I tried different techniques and molding materials as well as different sealers for our model that all resulted in failures before finally arriving on a path with the correct material and the right molding approach that will make it possible and make it work. Now, I've decided in order to make this project successful, I do need to make a two-part mold of this broccoli. And for that, we do need to think about the passages through the broccoli here. There's large passages, but then further where the broccoli sprouts begin, that needs to be blocked off completely so we can make a mold of one side and then the other off our model. Now for that, I will be using a oil-based clay. This is alien clay medium that I soften up using a crock pot. And that's going to allow us to seal one half of our model so that the silicone cannot penetrate through. This will allow us to make first one half and then the second half of our mold. And we're going to build this clay up all the way up to the edge. So this is what it should look like. We can see some passages through on the bigger stems, but all the smaller stuff has been blocked out. Now this hole in the working board, in the surface, has two functions. One, it helps us to position and stabilize the broccoli, and also it allows the air that's in the model, because it is not sealed, to move in and out of the model without traveling into our molding material, creating air bubbles. And now we do need to have a separation line between the two halves of the mold that we're making. And for that, I will be using some Sculptix oil-based clay. This is Sculptix Soft, very easy to work and manipulate. Something to keep in mind when building up a clay divider like this in your two-part mold is that the irregular shape of the clay will act as a key between the two halves of the mold. So make sure that the beveled edges are not interlocking when you create the two halves of the mold. And I'm going to go around the perimeter of the model and basically come as close as possible to the model. You can see here I'm even 
uh, smoothing out some of the clay, the alien clay that was on the model itself. So we're trying to close up the gap between the model and our clay buildup. And this is what the model should look like once we uh, build up that clay. Now for the first half of the mold that we're creating, I decided to create a brush on mold using body double standard. And the reason why I chose to use this material is for several reasons. Number one is a fast setting material is viscosity it's very thick so it will not seep into the porosity of the broccoli and with the combination of the two it creates a perfect material for this type of project the body double standard has a very easy and convenient mix ratio of one part a to one part b by volume we can simply dispense equal amounts and then mix it thoroughly. Make sure that you scrape the sides and scrape the bottom off your mixing container when you are mixing these products. This is the cheapest insurance that you will have of mixing the material thoroughly by transferring it into a second mixing container and giving it a one more mix. Now we can go ahead and start the brush on application and you can see here I'm not doing a stippling technique. I'm simply brushing the material over the surface very slowly and allowing the material to seep into the pores as much as possible. It will not go all the way so that's not a big issue. So then we're going to continue applying the material until the entire model is covered. This will be the first layer of a brush on mold that we're making. The body double standard is now allowed a partial cure of five minutes before applying the next layer. Because this material sets up very rapidly, the partial cure is achieved in the meantime while we dispense and mix the next layer. And then we're going to apply it right over the previous layer. Now I usually add pigmentation whenever doing brush on molds like this. Uh, that way we can see the application of material uh, over previous layers much better visually. In this case we're only doing three layers so I'm just going to mix up the material and apply it over and over until I achieve the right thickness of the mold. For this silicone mold to be very flexible, I'm aiming for overall thickness of the rubber at about quarter inch. Anything thinner than that has a potential for tearing while under stress. As the working time or pot life of the material expires, you will notice that the material is thickening as it's curing. And as you can see, I can slowly maneuver some of that material into areas that I feel could create possible uh, mechanical lock due to some undercuts. Now the material is allowed to cure for 20 minutes before proceeding on with the next step. Once the body double standard has cured, we are ready to move on to create the support shell for the mold here. And to do that, we need to trim back the silicone rubber. And the reason why I'm using this plastic bucket is going to become apparent in the second half of this mold. Uh, we're going to use the diameter of this bucket to create the second half of the rubber mold. You'll see that shortly. And here I'm trimming away a registration key. This key will allow us to understand which way the mold goes back together. Now here I'm going to decide, uh, looking over the model, where the separation line is for the two halves of our support shell. I'm going to mark that with a marker and then using Sculptix Soft, which is my preferred uh, oil-based clay for uh, separation walls like this. It's easy to use, doesn't inhibit the cure of silicone rubbers. And it's a very versatile material that I definitely think you should have in your toolbox. Here I'm just finishing building up that separation line where our support shell will uh, split in half. There's a big key that we apply to the top so it registers easily with itself. 
And then we're going to apply some Ease Release 200 to the entire setup. This is called a spray brush spray technique, where we first spray the release on, use a dry brush and spread it around, and then give it one more quick misting of the release agent. The release agent is allowed to sit for five minutes before applying any support shell material over it. Now to make a fast and quick support shell, uh, we're going to be using the Smoothcast 300 casting resin, and we're going to mix it with the Eurofill 11. This makes for a fast setting brush on paste that you can make support shells out of. So we're going to dispense one part of the Smoothcast 300 part B, and then we're going to dispense two parts of the Eurofill 11 by volume. And then we're going to combine those two together before even dispensing the part A because the part A of urethanes is very moisture sensitive. And even the humidity in the air can be enough to cause a reaction. So we want to minimize the exposure to the humidity in the shop. Once we mix the part B and the filler together, we can go ahead and dispense and mix the part A into the mixture. Mix thoroughly, make sure that you work fast. The 300, Smoothcast 300 sets up very fast. You have three minutes of working time and a 10 minute cure. And here you can see how thick that material is. It becomes a very thick paste that we can now easily spread over our model using a brush or using a mixing stick. I understand that each artist has its own preference to the handling of certain materials. For me, it ends up being a brush followed with a mixing stick. The Smoothcast 300 is allowed to partially cure for five minutes while we dispense and mix the next batch. Now, because we applied that first layer thin, we're going to apply a second layer and here I'm using a block of silicone to help me tilt that mold a little bit upwards. Even though it's thick, it's still a little helpful to have that mold tilted. And now I'm just smoothing out that second layer of material. So again, the reason why I like to apply this material in two thin layers is because it gives me more control over the material that I'm applying because the material short working time. If we had too much material, it becomes very difficult to spread it evenly throughout the entire buildup. By having less material, I'm allowed to put an even coat, thus controlling the thickness of the support shell and preventing any potential weak areas in this support shell. The material is now allowed 10 minutes to cure before moving on to the next step. And now that the first half of our support shell has cured, we can trim that back and clean up the edges a little bit before removing the clay separation wall that we built earlier. Once the clay is removed, we can go ahead and apply some East Release 200 to the first half of the support shell. Again, we're gonna apply this using a spray brush spray technique. The release agent is allowed five minutes to sit before applying the next half. And then just like we did for the first half of the support shell, we're going to mix up the Smoothcast 300 with the Eurofill and follow up and build the second half of our support shell. Keep in mind that this is still just the first part of our mold. The Smoothcast is allowed to cure for 10 minutes after we apply all the material. Now, once the material has set up, we can go ahead and start to work on the second half of a mold by removing the mold from the working surface. And remember that broccoli is going to stay with that mold because it is embedded within that rubber, um, not only the rubber, but also the Sculptex Soft. And now I can proceed by slowly removing that Sculptix clay. As you can see here, there's a couple of blemishes where it pulled away some of the alien clay that I built up earlier. 
We're going to fix that up before proceeding on to the next step. But do keep in mind that circular shape that we had earlier, that bucket. So here we cut the bottom off and that now becomes the mold box for the second half of our mold. The second half will be a pour on mold and this will be the containment box for it. I use hot melt glue to secure the mold blocks in place and also prevent any of the silicone from leaking out of our mold box. Now before pouring silicone over this, we're going to apply some East Release 200. And we're going to also apply it using a spray brush spray technique. The East Release 200 is now allowed to sit for 5 minutes before moving on to the next step. Now, the second half of our mold, we're going to be using a soft silicone called the Ecoflex 0035. This is also fast setting silicone. The working time is two and a half minutes. So we do have to be fast, but the important part, this is a soft silicone and it's going to work well with the pass-throughs that we have in the bottom of broccoli. Now, this material has a mix ratio of one to one by volume or weight. And we're going to use the by volume dispenser ratio and we're going to mix the two components together. Keep in mind this is a translucent silicone. It has no pigment in it and therefore it's really hard to tell how well we mix the components together. So just like we did previously, we're going to mix thoroughly and then get the material into that mold box. We don't have time to double mix this material because of its really fast working time. The Ecoflex is allowed a cure for five minutes before moving on to the next step. Now that the Ecoflex is cured, we can go ahead and demold our model. We're going to start by adding some of the isopropyl alcohol to the hot melt glue that's going to soften the hot melt glue and help us loosen the support shell. And then we're simply going to remove those rubber bands. The support shell comes off quite easily. It's very good. Good sign. And the two halves of our mold do come apart very easily as well but you want to go slowly when demolding that brush on mold part don't just yank it off go slowly the rubber mold is still fresh and it has not reached its full strength so when you are demolding go very slowly so, and here you have the two halves of our mold. You can see that the uh, brush on part has retained a lot of that uh, detail from the broccoli. We'll deal with that in one second. And just like we did on the first half, go slowly by removing the broccoli out of the Ecoflex. We don't want to pull too hard and tear some of the freshly made mold. Now that we have the broccoli out, we're going to use some compressed air to blow out all those little parts out of the silicone that are stuck in the silicone. For that, you do want to use some eye protection because these uh, little pellets uh, will fly out of the silicone and they can hit you in the eye. So we do want to prevent that. And now we can focus on the second half of the mold. You can see these pass-throughs here. We do need to cut those open so that we can retrieve our casting out of this mold. You do have to be very strategic. You can't just start cutting away. These do have to hold in place when they are cut apart. You don't want to cut too much, just the passages where you need to retrieve your casting through. Baby powder or talc will help with the surface tension of freshly made silicone and allow the silicone to glide easily over itself, which is important because you want those two halves of the silicone that you cut apart to register back together. And then the mold is post-cured in a shop oven. 
the reason why I'm post curing the silicone mold is the fact that I'm worried because there's a lot of fine detail and actually mechanical locking going on in the mold. I'm worried that a casting when pulling that apart, a freshly made mold would just tear up all that uh, fine detail like it did in some of my failed molds. So to prevent that, we're going to post cure the mold to get it to achieve its final and full strength. Once the post curing process is complete, we're going to allow the mold to cool to room temperature before handling. Now there is some high spots in this broccoli here and for that we're going to use this brass tube to punch some vent holes. This is a very simple process but it is time consuming. All the high spots that we're going to be worried about the air trapment we're going to punch holes through them and here you can see some of those holes coming through the other side of our rubber mold. Now here is the reason why I'm punching those um, air vents in. On the left you can see a example of a broccoli that has a lot of air bubbles, air voids, and that's why I punch those holes in. So after casting one of these broccolis I discovered there's a lot of air trapment and by adding the air vents that has been dramatically minimized. So once again here we're going to align our two halves of the mold and then the entire mold will get put together with the support shell. Again that alignment key is very helpful here and once the mold is together we can strap it in using some rubber bands. We're not only going to strap in the mold itself, the support shell, but we will also create a compression ring that will uh, hold the mold together, the two halves together. And here I'm just uh, quickly drawing this out and just like that it's cut. And one more time, boom cut the circle of the center out too and what that does it's basically the second half of the support shell for the second half of our mold. So that holds the two halves together and prevents uh, the second half of the mold from floating apart from the first. Here I cut up a little uh, container we're gonna use that as a pour spout on the mold and once the mold is all set we can then go ahead and prep our casting material. For this casting I am using the KX Flex 40. This material is a fast setting polyurethane elastomer that has a convenient and easy to use mix ratio of 1A to 1B by volume. So there's no need to use a gram scale, we can simply dispense the material by volume and then we're going to add the pigment to the part B. Now this pigment I have mixed using the UVO green and UVO white to give us a nice soft green base color for the casting. Mix it thoroughly and then we're going to add the part A. Now this is a fast setting material but I will double mix it just to make sure that we get a good uh, combination of the A and B and pigment all together. Uh, once we mix the product we can go ahead and pour it into our mold. Once the material is poured the cure time of the KX Flex is 24 hours. And now that the material has set up we can go ahead and demold our castings. Yes I did make multiple of these because you can't have enough broccoli. I'm going to take the support shell apart and then remove the pour spout and slowly open our mold. Now keep in mind I keep saying slowly open the mold. I'm using air pressure here to get the two halves apart. I'm even putting some air down those air vents and then we're going to slowly pry the mold apart very slowly and carefully. 
keep in mind that the materials are still fresh inside and we don't want to cause any tears. You can see how I'm plugging the second half of the Ecoflex mold slowly out of the casting. And now to prevent any of the fine detail off the broccoli head from ripping out of the mold by demolding, I'm using again compressed air to facilitate a much easier demold with a much better success rate than if we just uh, pull the mold apart. And here I'm even using some pliers to pull some of those fine details out of the mold. And here's the final result of the casting, of our broccoli casting. You can see that the uh, mold captured all the detail and our casting material was able to then capture that detail out of the mold. Now to finalize our piece, we can uh, trim some of the extra material away so those air vents can get trimmed using some scissors. And then I'm going to go around the perimeter where the two halves of the mold meet and remove the rest of the flashing that is still on our casting. Now we can proceed on to the next step, which will be the painting of our castings. Now, because we didn't use any release agents in our mold, we can simply go right to painting. And for this, we're going to be using the Makeup Pro paints with the Flex Additive. The Flex Additive in the Makeup Pro paint will allow the cured paint to remain flexible and bend and flex with the flexible model that we're painting it onto. This ensures a durable and long lasting paint job on our castings. Now the mix ratio of the Flex to the Makeup Pro paint is one to one by volume, equal amounts. Even though the Flex appears white in color, it will not change the color or the tone of the color of the Makeup Pro paint that you're adding it to. Now, once we mix up our colors with the Flex, we can then go ahead and start the painting process. And here you can see that I'm simply dabbing on the first color, this is the lightest color, onto the casting itself. And once we have a base color for that, we're gonna set that aside and let it partially dry for 10 to 15 minutes. Applying three different shades of the color gives our casting a very realistic look. Once the final layer of the Makeup Pro paint is applied, we're gonna allow the paint to cure for 48 hours. And once the paint is dry, we can compare the real broccoli crown on the left to our casting on the right. And you can see that the detail on our casting is really stunning and closely resembles the original model. So, and there you have it, a step-by-step -step procedure that I use to create a platinum silicone mold off of original broccoli crown so that we can recreate many polyurethane props out of our mold. As you can see, ultimately it came down to figuring out the correct materials for this project as well as the correct mold approach, the mold design that we did. And that's why it was a mold making challenge. We had many failures, but ultimately we succeeded in what we set out to do. Now, if you have an idea about what we should do next, please let us know down in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. Keep up with our latest mold making casting and other videos. Remember to subscribe.